discussed the techniques. There's nothing, uh, there was no effort on our part to keep him from that. He was just as with the terrorist surveillance program. On the terrorist surveillance program, he had to personally sign off on that every 30 to 45 days. So the notion that the committee's trying to peddle it, somehow the agency was operating on a rogue basis and we weren't being told or the president wasn't being told, it was just a flat out lie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. And joining us now is Jennifer Rubin, columnist and author of The Right Turn blog at uh, The Washington Post. Uh, Jennifer, welcome back. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you. All right, your piece today um, it, it, uh, about the Democrats' uh, CIA uh, gambit backfiring. Um, I hope you're right. Uh, what makes you say that it's backfired? Well, since it was released, the Democrats have been tied up in knots. Uh, the CIA director, as your news headline said, uh, went on camera today and essentially contradicted Dianne Feinstein. Uh, he said that, in fact, useful information was gathered, that you couldn't possibly say that we could have, uh, with certainty, uh, have gotten the information any other way. Uh, he also was very clear that uh, he doesn't think that the um, agency essentially uh, did what they're accused of doing. They weren't a rogue agency. They were authorized in Maine, with the exception, as he said, of a few people who didn't exactly stick to the rules. Um, but you have this extraordinary scene now where the president's own CIA director, contradicts the Democratic head of the Intelligence Committee, who contradicts the President of the United States, who won't say one way or the other who's right. How, how do you like this? He's a bystander in his own administration. He won't say whether he agrees with Brennan, whether he agrees with Feinstein. Right. And he would, but he would not, uh, uh, you know, uh, second the call from John Kerry to Feinstein not to release the uh, information at this time. Right. So uh, uh, knowing him and, and, and based on that action, I guess we could assume he's on uh, he's on the other side. But, um, you know, John, Yu was on with us, the uh, the author of the so-called torture memos. And he said, you know, it's absolutely untrue that uh, the information they gained did not lead to to capturing the al Qaeda leaders that they've captured and killing the ones they've killed. And he said, yeah, we would have gotten Osama bin Laden uh, without the enhanced interrogation methods in another 10 to 20 years. But, yeah. you know, it, it's just uh, they're just putting forth a false uh, a false narrative. They are. And I don't see what their problem is. If they really don't want to use these techniques, why don't they just be honest with the American people and say, listen, yes, it was one technique. But on balance, we think it's not appropriate for the United States to be treating our uh, detainees this way. I don't agree with that. I tend to agree with Dick Cheney, but at least they'd be honest with the American people. I don't see why they have to cook up, cook the books and convince us that it was useless and uh, illegal or useless and uh, torture. Um, you know, I, I don't see why they can't make an intellectual argument that's at least honest. You wrote two pieces uh, today, uh, well, two, two pieces that I'm going to mention. You wrote several today. Um, uh, and that is, uh, what choice does the right have in 2016? And if the marquee names don't run. So why don't you put them both together and, uh, and talk about that? Sure. Everyone is assuming that uh, Chris Christie and or Jeb Bush run. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Maybe one of them runs and he bombs. Um, but regardless of that, um, it's worth looking at the people below that level, and particularly for conservatives uh, who... Uh, if you will, uh, the right of the party, um, who don't like either of these guys, what should they be looking at? And my argument is that the right usually comes up on the losing side in presidential primaries, in part because they divide up their vote and in part because they tend to get way out there with candidates who really aren't up for the task. And I would encourage them, um, I'm looking um, personally um, at some of these governors who are very conservative, who seem to be preparing themselves for the White House, who have experience, who don't have a lot of baggage, and haven't offended one faction or another in the Republican Party. And there are a few of those. Uh, there's Rick Perry, there's Bobby Chindal, there's Mike Pence. So there are quality candidates out there if you get past those two marquee names that everyone is hanging on. So I think um, conservatives, it's very hard to get them to agree on anything. Um, but if they can at least narrow their sights to the people who are credible candidates, people who have appeal broadly within the party and without uh, outside of the party, um, I think they might do a better job not only of picking the nominee, but picking a nominee who can then go on and beat Hillary Clinton. And briefly, you also wrote about how uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, has uh, eaten Hillary's lunch. Yeah. Um, it was not a <laughs> comment, by the way, on uh, her dietary uh, consumption. Uh, Elizabeth, <laughs> Warren, Elizabeth Warren has stolen the show in this um, 
battle over the budget. And as we speak, of course, they don't ha yet have a deal. She was the one who raised the little wrinkle in Dodd-Frank. She's the one sounding the popular uh, call um, that Democrats balk. Um, she turned everybody on a dime. Here's a Democrat who actually says what she thinks. I don't agree with her, but she's saying something. Um, she's leading. The left in their party is desperate to find uh, leadership, and here she is. And what is Hillary doing? Goodness knows what even her view is on this. Um, she's playing it safe. Yeah, no, she's at, well, Jennifer, we're out of time, but Hillary's actually uh, making sure she has the right pillows in her next speech. Jennifer Rubin, right turn column at the Washington Post. Thank you. Jed Babin is next.